How I mean, awesome is hockey? Huh? <laughs> 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 Woo! Playoff hockey is in the air, and as the pace ramps up, so does the entertainment. This week, we had prank wars, full line brawls, a last minute NHL debut, coaches going at it, teammates going at it. See, you're such a f- <laughs> it's not even funny. Hilarious calls. It was a mistake in the communication. The puck never crossed the goal line. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, some awesome moments that remind us of the incredible game that hockey is. So, join me with another week of taking a look at some of my favorite moments worth a second look. Now, to start, we get to watch three different types of hockey fans. First, there's the crazy ones. At the game, dressed up as gritty, this kid is going to be a future goalie. Then, there's the sweet young fella overrun with emotion after receiving a puck from Matthews. Awesome stuff. And then, there's the boss. Austin fan. A unique fan unlike any other as he had this all planned out. Knew his camera angles and everything. Just so good. But the main event this week was Rempy and McDermott. Now, we knew we were getting it, but to my surprise, at Puck Drop, it was a full-out brawl. Bodies everywhere, and I forgot if I had turned on a hockey game or WWE Battle Royale. Now, I covered it with a full video, but it was incredible. We had penalty boxes packed like sardines, coaches going at it, and it got serious when Laviolette took the gum out, made sure to send his best wishes to the family, and then popped it back in. During all of it though, just like a few weeks back where he stole some of Panger's green juice, Panarin again went for Panger's special drinks. A crazy scene in New York. But it wasn't the only barn with a packed penalty box this week. Over in Montreal, it was the Panthers who were getting cozy. In a game that had its fair share of extracurricular activities, a tasty sandwich here, and Slavkowski chatting up the ladies from the box, what was interesting in this one came in the second, after Gallagher appeared to possibly have scored, they had to take a second look at it. Trying to see if it crossed the line, and after review, we had a good goal. But immediately, everyone's a bit surprised, as it didn't seem conclusive. And sure enough, they came back with this. It was a mistake in the communication. The puck never crossed the goal line. Oh, jeez. No <laughs> wow, okay. Hey, Siri, play communication breakdown by Led Zeppelin. Wow. I didn't mean to call you to break up with you, I promise. <laughs> what? How does this even happen? But even Galley had to have a laugh at it. Maurice holding back a smile. And then there's Marty behind the bench, not so pleased. And speaking of penalty boxes, Revo had himself a busy week with multiple scraps. And the boys were absolutely loving it on the bench. But after his fight with Pizzetta, while in the box, McMahon would go on to score. And as we cut to the box, this was great. Boom. Then let's run through a few quick ones. This right here is a bad man. A goal and then the stare down. Oh, that is not how he had planned this to go. Over in Minnesota. And did you see it? Is that a bird at the XL Energy Center? Apparently it was a drone. Then Anderson with one tap, two tap, three, and then one to the leg. But no call. So Leon goes back and holy shit. There's a sniper in the building. Anderson goes down as Dreisaitl definitely not pleased. Then earlier in the week, final seconds, it's Ekholm for the win and he missed. Which, speaking of snipers, Dreisaitl saw that one coming. Then we had Zach Benson with the thing of nightmares. Empty net and his stick just implodes. Over in Columbus, we had a last minute call up with Cameron Butler who didn't arrive to the arena until after the game had started. So, no rookie lap, but he did get 54 seconds of ice time in his rookie debut. And finally, we had Baby No Money, reminding us that ice is, in fact, slippery. My name is Baby! Now, Marc-Andre Fleury, the prankster, has been well documented. Earlier this season, we covered his prank war with Duhame. Well, now that Duhame isn't with the Wild anymore, making his return to Minnesota, he made sure to keep the war going, toilet papering Fleury's entire vehicle. Now, what I love here is that they attempted to blur his face as if we can't tell who this is. With that said, he refused to take responsibility. So that's a good one. I like whoever did that. I don't know who did it. Oh, gotcha. I, couldn't, I couldn't even snitch on the guy. I don't know who did it. As for Flurry's reaction. You know what? I'm pretty proud of Brendan Duane, right? Uh, I'm kind of proud of him, though. He did a good job. Well done. 
I'm not sure Duhame looked at the schedule, but it's safe to say I don't think we've seen the end of this one. But with that, let's take a look at some of the best of the netminders this week. We had Primo in his crease getting caught up in Stamkos and Newhook going at it, just completely invading his space. As finally he's like, all right, I'm out. Then we had Fedotov making his debut, but coming from the KHL, he went to the wrong end in overtime. We had Quick being honored for becoming the winningest American goalie in NHL history at 392. Pretty cool stuff. But in that game, we had Shesterkin going behind the net and getting into it with Crosby, giving him the extra push as things got a bit heated. And finally, back to Flurry. He was busy at work fixing his own ice. Then in San Jose, we got a two for one as with the Hattie and the OT winner, William Eklund recorded a hat trick on hat night. So with nothing but smiles, he was rocking his hat. But it was also homegrown boy Devin Cooley's first win. And so with his mom in attendance, it was just all around beautiful stuff in San Jose. Heading over to Calgary now, we saw Trevor Zegris running into the official who caught him with an elbow? Looks like a penalty to me as Zegris certainly was not happy about it. But being an NHL official is often a thankless job and at the end of the day they deserve respect which is what we got in Winnipeg. An awesome moment between Ryan Galloway, longtime NHL linesman who called his final NHL game in his hometown of Winnipeg and every player lined up to congratulate him on his career. So much respect and honor in the great game of hockey. You love to see it. With that said, earlier in the game, with just seconds remaining, we got this interesting face-off. Pretty obvious what they were planning to do, but I'm not sure I've ever seen a face-off quite like this before. Then, going into some more quick ones in the ECHL, the Atlantic Gladiators had their own player, Mitch Fossier, playing the National Anthem in full gear. That was pretty dang cool. Over in the AHL, we had another set of coaches going at it. The Tucson Roadrunners assistant, Zach Stortini, challenging Bakersfield Con doors call and chuck in boston lundell heading to the box as whoop mcavoy with a bit of a troll job here sits him down then in san jose done with the shot and oh hits yanni gord in front right in the nether regions as this is not even funny honestly i know that feeling all too well and we had perry letting the flames know they're so bad <laughs> And it wouldn't be a weekly recap without Seth Jarvis. A lot of pieces of my game I need to work on. See, you're such a f <laughs> It's not even funny. Being a Duke fan, he didn't take too kindly to being interrupted by NC State fan Martin Hook. You and your f***ing dumb ass NC State jersey walking through like a f***ing blowhorn. Anyways. And then how about this? A couple of young Felino boys in training. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree as the little guy got his revenge. Then over in Sweden, we got this insane goal. The puck bounces up over the net. It's tipped back over the net again and batted out of midair for an unbelievable goal. We also got tips galore from the old boys in Ovi and Crosby. I know he didn't score this, but my Lanta, what an attempt. And then another crazy goal this week came from Mar Marchenko. Yoink, thank you very much. And then who even shoots this? Marchenko. That's who stares him right in the eyes while he does it off the face of Sorokin and in. Cold blooded. And then this is maybe the best thing you'll see today. Hockey fights cancer night and this little guy now in remission with the puck drop and <laughs> come on drop it <laughs> i love the little stick tabs here but he sure knows how to play an audience as finally he drops it and keeping the wholesome content going how about this after evgeny malkin put on another show with his parents in town they just couldn't help but get emotional seeing their boy in action for some context they hadn't been able to come to north america from russia in five years to see him play due to war and covid so this was just a beautiful moment and lastly i'm gonna leave you with pasta give Giving us an MTV Cribs NHL edition look at what an NHL team travels like. So thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it very much, and I'll see you in the next one. We got some burgers, oh, oh, cupcakes. Awesome. How are you? Hello. How are you? Good. Thank you. The car table. It's in my seat. All right, guys. Just gonna go watch a movie and go to bed. Legs up here. Oh.